This notebook goes over hierarchical clustering. We'll start by covering how it works. We'll then move into how to use it in Python and some strengths and weaknesses of hierarchical clustering. Here's a GIF file showing hierarchical clustering in action. Unlike k-means, hierarchical clustering doesn't require the user to specify the number of clusters beforehand. Instead, it returns an output from which the user can decide the appropriate number of clusters, either manually or algorithmically. If done manually, the user may cut the dendrogram, which is a graph that displays all these links in their hierarchical structure, and a dendrogram is what you see to the right of the GIF file. Another important concept is a linkage criterion. This defines the distance between clusters as a function of the points in each cluster and determines which clusters are merged or split at each step. That sentence is illustrated in the GIF file below. I advise you to take some time and look at this GIF file. So here's how roughly this algorithm works. You first create a cluster for each point containing only that point. The second step is to choose two clusters with centroids closest to each other. The third step is to repeat step two until only one cluster remains. As far as comparing k-means and hierarchical clustering, in k-means, k is user-specified, and k-means is a centroid-based clustering algorithm. It also assumes clusters are isotropic. In other words, you have a circular or a spherical distribution. Hierarchical clustering builds hierarchies of clusters, and hierarchical clustering works well for non-spherical clusters. One major disadvantage of this clustering technique is it may be computationally intensive. One major advantage is that this clustering algorithm is guaranteed to converge to the same solution. Recall that for k-means, this is not necessarily the case. One big issue with k-means is that it's sensitive to the starting position of the center clusters as each method converges to a local optima. So as usual, we're gonna import the libraries that we wanna use. In this case, we're also going to create our own data, and this is just to show some of the strengths and weaknesses of hierarchical clustering. So we have dataset 1 and dataset 2. So we're going to implement bottom-up hierarchical clustering. We're going to specify that we want 4 and 2 clusters, respectively. You might notice that this algorithm did not perform super well on the circles. We can impose a connectivity constraint where points can only be within their five nearest neighbors. You'll see that this algorithm can now capture the non-globular structures within the data set. So now let's look at another example of hierarchical clustering. For this example, we're going to use the animals with attributes data set. And this is just a small data set that has information on roughly like 50 animals. And for each animal, the information consists of 85 features. So does the animal have a tail? Is it slow? Does it have tusks? Does it have spots, etc.? The files that compose this data set are fixed width. If you forget what that is, here's a quick shot of it. I put the information into one pandas data frame. And please notice how animals differ from each other. For example, we have a Dalmatian, and for the column spots, it has 100 here, whereas the other dogs have a value of roughly 10. And like a lot of algorithms, hyperbole clustering is sensitive to scale, so we're gonna use standard scalar. After we scale our data, we can put this into a dendrogram As you can see, we grouped a lot of the dogs together. We also grouped a lot of the deer and antelope together. 
as well as different sea or ocean-bearing creatures.